So anyways, I have worked on the issues we've discovered the last time during the week and and I dare say I didn't I had improved on the lunch logic lo logic a lot. So yeah, the capture thing and the uh... Yeah, the basically capture thing was, was a problem. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> that was indeed the problem um, caused by the... Well, uh, by the different uh, distribution of mass of parts uh, the, uh, it was asymmetric. That caused it. Well, what what the accelerator measured uh, was the distance between the center of mass of the whole uh, vessel and the center of attraction of the loading chamber. Uh, the loading chamber has uh, a single point. Uh, that is uh, that is the attractor, uh, okay. and uh, I assumed that uh, the way the the magnetic field acts on the parts of the vessel uh, is consistent with its uh, center of mass. So uh, the the equilibrium point uh, should have been. Uh, uh, sh 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 should have been the, the point where the center of mass of the whole vessel uh, coincides uh, with the attractor. But it seems that uh, the geometry, the, uh, the visible geometry of each part um, well, it um, it affects uh, how the force apl is applied to the rigid body of that part. And what we saw is that uh, this, uh, this small rocket, this, this ship, it found equilibrium. Uh, the forces that uh, had acted on each of its parts uh, they zeroed each out uh, out uh, at point where its center of mass uh, was a bit to the front from the attractor. So what I did with this, I replaced this uh, distance parameter that I measured with the displacement from the axis because this is really what I care about. I I want that the ship is uh, would be centered uh, with respect uh, of the barrel of the channel. Because there was always some some kind of offset, and it was pushing, 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 and it never satisfied the condition. Uh, well, no. Uh, the forces that act on the parts, uh, some of them are pushing, some, uh, some of them are pulling, and uh, somewhere there is a point of equilibrium where they all cancel each other out. And that point did not correspond uh, to, uh, did not correspond with the center of masses. Because of the geometry of the parts, somehow, I don't know, because uh, what I do is I apply the forces to the rigid bodies of the parts. Basically, they're, they're a root transform for each uh, part. Mm, I, I'm not sure uh, if they are... Uh, hey, Alice, uh, yeah. the, the, does it have uh, the, the part configuration contains the description for center of mass uh, coordinates, no. right? No, no, no. Uh, 
Uh, usually not. You can add the offset of the center of masses, but uh, uh -huh. well, ah, no, uh, no, I'm wrong. Uh, the center of masses is just the origin of the parts transform. So when you make a part and it consists of several meshes, multiple colliders, etc., etc., uh, there is uh, the origin, the point with the coordinates of 0, 0, 0. And that is the center of mass if you, are, uh, if you didn't supply the COM offset. Huh, thanks. So uh, the center of mass may be anywhere in the part, and uh, you decide it when you create the model. It's basically the origin of coordinate system. I hope people pay attention when make making parts. <laughs> oh, the, those crazy offsets. They usually do, because well, it's it's important <laughs> with this kind of game. Well, anyways. Uh, for now, for basically symmet for axially symmetric vessels, I fixed that problem. It may appear if the vessel is asymmetric um, with respect to the axis, to its axis, front to to rear. Uh, but well, I I'll decide what to do with it. Uh, when I go to the bridge. So for now you see all is all is green. And what and what we need, we need to align the accelerator. Oh I've decreased the <laughs> the plumes. Excuse me, uh, I don't know how to join the video stream. Oh it's on Twitch. Uh, I'm not sure my uh, PC is uh, is strong enough to stream twice. Uh, I, I stream on Twitch. Oh, like the last time. Yeah, 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 yeah. I stream on Twitch okay. because uh, more uh, well, not everyone who wants to watch uh, have Discord account, for example. Also, the Twitch records the stream and Discord does not. So I use Discord just for audio for, for, for the conversation, but the Twitch for the video also it allows to export the result to YouTube, for example. Okay. Got the stream. Yeah, we've aligned. Uh, the accelerator. I have uh, worked on this uh, also a bit. And what we'll do now is we'll just launch our pilot uh, with its maneuver node. So what we want to check is that uh, the resulting oh sorry the resulting orbit is uh, is what we desire. So twelve o twenty four and some meters. The apoapsis I don't know how to pronounce it. I had to implement my own audio effects, sound effects uh, for the RCS of the collider because it cannot use the model RCS FX. And it still has... Oh! Uh, interesting, and why do we... So it says... Yeah. 
some other shot. I wonder why. Maybe because it had to rotate and use some RCS thrust. So the orbit is close, but not exactly the one we need. So let's let's try again. There's still a lot of unknown unknowns here. Each time I I test and test and test it again, and each try I each time I try to demonstrate it to to anyone, uh, I get another set of uh, of unexpected results like this one. Anyways, I think it's about time to finish the model. I think I like what what's become of it, and I got to pull it down. And everything working. Oh, sorry. Everything is working now. You can now switch to design of the mod model. Oh, I'm not sure that everything is working. <laughs> Basically, it's there. Well, yeah, that's. I uh, had uh, with my mod uh, a, a inverse problem. I started to making parts, then st start making mod for those parts, and then I started making more parts, and then I realized my mod needs changing to accommodate new features. Yeah, that's uh, that's the usual thing. Okay, let's at least try to use the torque compensation mode and well. Okay, so why? Didn't it? This zero point three meters per second. This seem awfully. Hmm. It's consistent. This 0 0.3 meters per second is the recoil uh, delta V of the accelerator in this maneuver. Well, so why? Why does it? Receive this extra bit of acceleration. Hmm. 
There is one thing that worries me. Yeah. The rocket engines used to compensate for recoil. You add them to the superstructure of the accelerator. Yeah. And they are not built in. Well, what if the thrust is not sufficient to compensate for that? Um, the player can make a mistake. Well, any thrust is sufficient, uh, provided enough uh, thrust time. You just need to throw away some reaction mass. Uh, so Maybe he wants to correct his orbit back into the, the starting parameters. Yeah, the big difference between uh, the acceleration of uh, well between the normal maneuver uh, maneuver execution and this is because you can accelerate with a lot of uh, with a lot of uh, g-force. Uh, you can provide uh, enough acceleration to perform maneuver quicker and uh, cheaper for the payload. And then at your leisure you may compensate uh, those uh, some meters per second that the accelerator gained as a recoil. Uh, but you don't uh, have to do it quickly, you don't have to do it, uh, well, in a single burn, uh, etc. Yes, so the player the... should think that uh, if he wants to have a, a accelerator in some predictable parking orbit, for example, I don't know how to call it, then he should uh, make sure to have engines with big thrust, so... Yeah, so when it launches, it can quickly compensate and then be ready for the next launch. Otherwise, it could be, wait for several orbits even, considering yeah. the mass. Yeah. But also, the bigger the mass, the less the recoil and the less is actual orbit change. Yeah, that's uh, one, one cancels the other, so it keeps it in balance. So with with the current balance, uh, I wouldn't call it that, but anyways, um, um, usually uh, you have only a fraction of one meter per second as a recoil, and it's easy enough to compensate. Let's well, let's try this uh, with also with this maneuver, but let's focus on the accelerator. Oh well, let's just switch to the accelerator, why not? And uh, see how it automatically uh, compensates for the recoil. And I suspect uh, this is what causes the additional uh, acceleration during the maneuver of the payload. I will need to, to investigate this, but I suspect it's, it's this. So, currently the accelerator has TCA enabled and the TCA has the, uh, the maneuver autopilot which can execute maneuvers precisely. And when the launch is complete and uh, the the magnetic field is switched off and uh, the payload uh, flies freely or it actually left the barrel uh, completely. The accelerator automatically configures uh, a maneuver node for the compensation, for reaction, uh, for recoil compensation. And then it sends a message uh, to the TCA, which executes this maneuver automatically. Uh... So you basically need TCA with this well, and not. Uh, this is not a hard dependency, uh, ah, not okay. at all. It uh, they uh, pass messages to each other through native Unity mechanism. So TCA doesn't have to be present but if it is and it's enabled uh, you will benefit from it
I like the multiple time warps at a lower and lower factor. Yeah. Uh, That's a smart thing. That's what I do inside of TCA uh, in all of its uh, manu uh, orbital autopilots. But. Uh, there it goes. Yeah, there it goes, and uh, engines fired for. Yeah, 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 yeah. That that was the compensation for the recoil, the automatic compensation. As soon as maneuver was finished and the uh, magnets was uh, were turned off, uh, the TCA uh, got the request for the maneuver and performed it uh, as soon. Interestingly, not much fuel was used, no much burn time, it really just puff and that's it. Yeah, yeah, because, well, it's heavy and the maneuver is, well, less than 40 meters per second. But let's, uh, let's try something. Uh... It's interesting now, if you have multiple barrel segments added, it will, of course, uh, accumulate a lot of mass. Yeah. But it's a small uh, diameter. It it should be possible to launch very uh, small payloads very far away, so to speak, and it's still going to use very little fuel. Uh, how to say it? It will be more economic to have a bigger mass accelerator. <laughs> um. It, it is uh, a minor uh, savings, but still, it's there. Unfortunately, not because you cannot bypass the energy conservation law. You have you have uh, transferred some energy in the form of kinetic energy to the payload. You have to pay the exact amount to stay at the same orbit. Nothing can. No, no, no. Sorry, uh, I didn't uh, say it properly. I was meaning that the diameter of the uh, orbital accelerator uh, remains small, so the payloads remain small, but the accelerator itself is uh, getting bigger and bigger, so it will recoil less and less. That's what I was trying to say. It will recoil less, but to compensate for the lesser recoil, you will have to use more fuel for heavier accelerator. <laughs> Still balances out. And energy is conserved. You cannot bypass that. And this is all about energy. The reaction mass, the acceleration of the payload. Uh... First law of thermodynamics. <laughs> Thou shall not create energy from nothing. Yeah. So, what I was really hoping to show is the thing that bothered me from the beginning. Uh, the, the length of the accelerator limits uh, ultimately the delta V it can provide. Uh, Without killing the crew or destroying the payload. Uh, no, ultimately, because uh, the more you accelerate, the quicker you bypass uh, the barrel, and there is a physical limit of what uh, of uh, what delta v you can provide. Yeah, uh, you cannot provide, you, you cannot exert uh, infinite force and uh, have infinite acceleration. So acceleration is finite and it has some boundary and considering this uh, boundary th this upper limit for the acceleration uh, the, uh, the kernel finite current finite barrel length uh, can provide uh, your payload uh, n no matter its weight uh, some maximum delta v no more because the payload moves through the barrel and the faster it moves, uh, the quicker the barrel ends and cannot accelerate uh, further. So, uh, the two, well, the, the calculation is as follows. Two kilometers of the barrel 
at acceleration of 50 G's uh, uh, would give you no more than 900 meters per second. So this is barely enough to go from low uh, carbon orbit to the moon. And uh, because the two kilometer uh, barrel costs a lot of funds, uh, the question remains how useful are accelerators uh, if they only can uh, provide you with a limited set per second. well with a limited set of maneuvers okay you uh, you may want to perform uh, well two kilometers per second uh, maneuver but if the accelerator m may uh, eat well half of the uh, half of it it's uh, it's already uh, a big deal but um, previously the accelerator would only perform uh, a maneuver that it is sure it can handle uh, from start to finish what i did uh, with these messages that accelerator and tca may pass to each other i've added the uh, the ability to well, to assist with the maneuver. So the accelerator would uh, would provide as much of delta V as it can, and the rest will be executed by the onboard computer with the engines that that the payload has. Because I he must be powered the payload. Cannot be unpowered anyway. the, yeah, Well, true. the payload cannot be unpowered because uh, you can have accelerators, but you cannot have decelerators. Uh, yes. Well, not in the game. In real life, it can be done because in real life, you may have a very, very precise navigation. You can... Nerves of steel. But here, if well, I've tested this uh, a lot while I worked on the accelerator. You have a maneuver node, for example. Uh, you open the map view, you note the positions of apoapsis, periapsis, and uh, the respective uh, radii, and then you just reload. With uh, n nothing happens, you just reload this, this exact same game uh, with the exact same uh, maneuver node. You open the map view and you see completely different figures. Uh, uh, the error is about well, several hundred meters or even several kilometers for large enough orbits. So the floating point errors here do, do not allow precise navigation. And so if you want to have a decelerator, something that catches the payload, unpowered payload and decelerates it, you have to have, uh, well, about several kilometers wide decelerator. Oh boy. And well, you cannot provide strong enough magnetic forces or something to catch it. Yeah. Magnetic flux will be way, way too low. Yeah. Okay, so the... What? Ah, I need to reconnect. Okay. No. Why? Why does it show the maneuver node in such a strange? Phew. That that is indeed strange. Oh, okay. I 
no. So, what's new? Uh, there is a... Uh, there is a toggle. Which is currently named partial launch. That allows the accelerator to uh, perform launches that exceed its ability to accelerate. Yeah, that's that's right. Uh, but you can override it. You can set the partial uh, yes, yes. the partial launch to allowed, and then the accelerator will it will tell you that uh, it doesn't have enough barrel length to accelerate uh, for the desired 131 meters per second, but it can provide you with uh, 108 meters per second, which is good enough. Uh, but then uh, you would want to continue the maneuver and you don't want to make it uh, manually because the time is short so what we do we again imply the the messages mechanism to inform the uh, tca on board of the payload to continue the maneuver as soon as the payload leaves the barrel So it will be launched and fire its own engines. After it leaves the barrel. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. That's great. You don't have to wait for the node to be reached and then fire, then, but uh, fix everything uh, right at the start and fire yeah. it. Yeah. And both accelerator and the payload will fire their engines uh the former to compensate for the recoil and the later to continue the maneuver let's uh, do it again from the payload point of view i really have to oh i never mind uh, i do have a quick save for this so just reload is a quick save. There is one minor request. Yeah. Uh, more than an idea, but you consider it. Uh, automatic uh, switching to payload. Uh, I don't do it here for the testing purposes. I uh, I have to have an option to uh, view the launch from different points of view and to see what uh, would break because uh, KSP treats uh, focused and unfocused uh, vessels very differently. Oh yeah, so I like uh, in ten seconds he leaves the two kilometer radius and uh, he, uh, accelerator is uh, left dead in the water. That's Unloaded. not that's not a problem because I can increase the unloading range, but for example the active vessel does have a patched uh, conic solver, the thing that actually. Uh, that's why you only on, uh, among other thing reasons. That's why you uh, make uh, payload fire its own engines immediately, so it fixes because when it leaves the focus. Uh, no, no, the payload is not focused, so it doesn't. Sorry, I mean when the payload leaves the uh, sphere, uh, in which KSP uh, calculates and uh, physics. No, no, no. Uh, I. I manage the sphere of physics, so uh, neither the payload nor the uh, accelerator do not unload. But one of the vessel and only one is active. It's uh, the vessel uh, to which the camera points, and it's the vessel that uh, receives the control inputs and such. And this vessel has the patched the patched uh, conic solver, 
the thing that actually uh, solves uh, the orbits uh, after the series of maneuver nodes but the uh, but the vessel that is in physics range is loaded and and unpacked uh, but is not active it does not has uh, the solver it only has its maneuver nodes as a well as a text actually as a config node and to perform a maneuver uh, with unfocused vessel uh, I have to load uh, the information about the node and perform my own orbital calculations and perform my maneuver um, you, you, you were basically, basically your own patch, patch conics. Uh, well, yeah. It's a tricky business. Two, Two vessels, vessels, common connection. Okay. So, so to test all the scenarios, uh, I had to uh, to actually to comment out the automatic uh, switching to the payload but it's there uh, so i just don't know uh, when to do it when it's better to do it uh, from the well from the aesthetic points of view uh, when maneuvers only started or when the the payload leaves the barrel or well it, it, it's minor issue anyways so what we have now the maneuver node that actually mostly changes the the plane of the orbit a bit of apoapsis and so let's target i can, I can imagine orbital accelerators being used to launch off, off the uh, main uh, orbital plane that's, that's a, it's a that's really, really good, good choice yeah but it's, it's interesting, interesting that it, that it uh, may launch uh, uh, away from the um, uh, how it's called dna an uh, anti node and uh, the other one uh, ascending node and descending node yes, yes that one yeah. They are 90 degrees uh, in uh, or comparison to apoapsis and periapsis, usually. Um, not this time. <laughs> yeah. So, what what we are hoping to achieve is uh, 13.5 degrees uh, at descending node and 13,930. 13 meter, uh, kilometers of apoapsis and uh, for this launch will will be at the payload uh, fr fr uh, this launch will be from the payload's perspective do you use or have tried to use uh, Kerbal uh, engineering uh, redux. Uh, well, I, I've, I've I've tried it several times, but I didn't um, didn't understand uh, uh, what. I used it just for basic information for to remain in delta v and uh, for my. SSTOs, if, if I, I use, use SSTOs. Uh, I was trying to say that uh, it would be confused as hell when it tried to uh, see the vessel suddenly accelerate without using it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So now the payload would accelerate through the barrel and then Fire its engines uh, for the rest of the of the way, and we have thirteen point five uh, degrees at descending node, and thirteen and nine hundred and eight 
of kilometers of APO access and we were expecting to have 13 and 913. So, nice, so five, five kilometers uh, of error at apoapsis of all this magnitude. Wow. I mean, that's really something. You could almost hit the moon or plant an air break this way. Mm. Not without uh, further corrections, but they would be minor corrections. But you can't, yeah. I mean, based compared to the fuel expenditure uh, without the accelerator. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You from uh, 151 and 58 meters per second you just had to provide 52 meters per second that's great and that is even with this uh, small accelerator uh, so the the assisted launch is a really a big feature for this practical be, users this could be great for satellites uh, with uh, ion engine configurations for uh, long burns and long missions yeah. Just launch it and here we go. I don't know how it wouldn't be very precise in for Helio, for how would it say it? Uh, orbit around the sun, not around the curve. Heliocentric. That heliocentric, yeah. Then, then it's a good name. Heliocentric orbits because uh, errors would be really, really big there. Uh, players should really pay attention, pay attention to these things. Well, with uh, KSP mechanics and floating point, point errors and such, uh, you yeah, don't, you, you, yeah, yeah, you don't actually uh, have the opportunity for the precise navigation at that, sc at that scale. So everything you can do is to uh, to design. Uh, a, seri a series of maneuvers that will get you well th that will get you somewhere near uh, the near the uh, near the state that you want and then you will just have to sit there and uh, and perform several small corrections uh, here and there until the resulting orbit is what you need but you can't do what well nasa and actual space agencies do when yeah, they else. when they uh, beforehand calculate everything with uh, enormous precision and uh, test and retest and then they launch the payload from Earth and and then automatically it somehow lands at Mars where they want it. So the, the, the last two uh, launches of Mars rovers uh, they were they were great feats of uh, orbital navigation uh, performed uh, beforehand. They were programmed launchers. But still, really, really cool. Uh, I've seen uh, really? yeah. all the Blackboard that uh, first engineers used to plan orbital maneuvers, I don't know how long ago. That Blackboard was, was like five meters wide and then, and then like three meters tall. The engineer that performed calculations had to use ladders to get up <laughs> so we could write the free part of the blackboard it was like impressive he had to hold the whole calculation in his head remember where where was written what i mean hands down, that engineer i really had to salute to him totally crazy
Okay, so now we see the same lunge from the perspective of the accelerator. So the payload leaves the barrel, the accelerator compensates uh, for the recoil and the payload continues the maneuver with its own engines. With comparable results. A bit of undershot, and that's all. Okay, so that that's, that's it. That's it, and that this is this becomes interesting. There, there is, is one, one interesting thing, thing that now came across my mind. I was thinking about uh, the accelerator inside the accelerator, and something like stage acceleration. Then I thought it was uh, well impractical but then i remembered something even more interesting the accelerator could in theory launch well not in one go but in multiple stages multiple payloads for another accelerator that will be eventually built at the destination yes each payload should have its own engines so it should insert itself into orbit uh, and etc but and find its uh, uh, payload uh, uh, construction point. But in theory, you should be able to one, once build one accelerator to send parts to build another accelerator. Yeah, why not? Because it's just the same as ordinary launches and uh, ordinary points. maneuvers. Uh, you just delay the payment. What Accelerator does for you is it uh, allows you to delay the payment in reaction mass and this allows you to actually decrease uh, the costs in funds because and it's much... fraction ratio goes up. Yeah, uh, it has uh, a great deal uh, larger ISP uh, compared to the uh, chemical I engines. Don't know if there is anything that has ISP of this? Well, <laughs> it's like an impossible ISP. I I haven't actually calculated the. Um, well, it doesn't have ISP because it doesn't have. Uh, reaction mass, but uh, you can calculate uh, some analog and I haven't done it and I didn't compare it with uh, things like uh, modern iron engines or some such, but it sure has a great ISP. So that's one thing and the other thing, it's, uh, it's a lot cheaper to uh, provide the accelerator at, at low orbit with additional fuel for compensation of the recoil than to provide a lot of fuel for the payload that goes uh, far away, I don't know, oh, beyond... Is that effect being called when you to change orbits from the low orbit? Something will let her be I don't remember, but yeah. So yeah, it saves some fuel. Fuel. It, it, it's, it's even possible, possible to do interesting. Uh, when, when I was, I was doing, doing the inclination burns, uh, say for uh, satellite in moon orbit, uh, I would do a highly eccentric orbit. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And then change inclination. Yeah. Ober Obert Obert effect. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's it. Yeah. The, the higher the perhaps is the cheaper the inclination changes changes so here you would uh, have cheaper maneuvers because it's cheaper to uh, pump the fuel up the gravity well uh, to the nearest low orbit and uh, convert this fuel uh, to uh, to a uh, high ISP propulsion, which the accelerator provides. Now, uh, one more question. Yeah. 
do you plan to make a terrestrial or uh, surface version of this, which does not have a, a maneuver node handling because uh, it basically it cannot uh, align itself to target? I did plan it from the start, but the more I think about it, the more... More impractical it becomes. I was no. thinking because of the... Uh, uh, Planetary bodies without atmospheres would probably benefit with this. Not impractical, but uh, harder and more complex because, well, because you cannot. Uh, yeah, how would gravity would affect the payload, and it would had to be stay disconnected? Yeah, how, you're right. How? Uh, yeah, uh, the, the thing it is, fall down the barrel and make a, a mess. So you have to have uh, two vectors of the attraction, one uh, coaxial with the barrel and uh, this, another one, uh, yeah, radio, pointed radially out uh, of the, yeah. So how would you uh, implement it uh, in, in reality? You would build a rail gun. You would build something that slides along uh, rails that can bend uh, with uh, low curvature, but they can bend, so you can accelerate uh, along the the curved line. But it's something like, like a normal orbit. orbit. But uh, in Unity, uh, you can't have a rail gun because uh, you only have colliders. Uh, and, and there is a problem with the uh, physics update. He to accelerate to a point that would contact between uh, collision uh, colliders would uh, make an overlap and then it would just go boom. Yeah, yeah. Pretty much so, every launch would be doomed to failure. So, uh, in Unity, you can't have uh, one physical object that pushes and accelerates another physical object while they are actually disconnected you can you can try to you can try to simulate this uh with uh, with joints maybe maybe, maybe maybe something else what if your uh, launch vector is aligned with the gravity vector a radial launch uh, that's yeah. That, that's that's very impractical. That's actually very impractical. You have to launch. Um, well, uh, the the best way is forty five degrees actually. So you just uh, give enough push so the that the payload reaches desired uh, apoapsis and then it fires its engines uh, or something yeah, something anything catches that's not, it uh, anything that's not uh, anything that's in radial pure radial force would still need to create a sideways motion yeah with its own engines. and and much Sideways. more yeah yeah so I seriously think about implementing uh, ground-based accelerators, but I still have have no idea how to actually do it. Uh, I have several ideas of how I can try to approach this, but which of these would provide any meaningful results, uh, I don't know yet. Maybe uh, if you do tests, do with them, do them with some uh, rudimentary collision, uh, collide with the colliders, basic colliders, and just see how it go, goes from there. Uh, so you, what you say is, if I can actually uh, compensate the gravity precisely enough so that the launch path would not curve enough to hit the barrel. It's actually uh, this problem. I can compensate the gravity, I can uh, launch along the barrel. Can... yeah, look at this. The engines are firing. Uh, the maneuver is performed, but there is no indicator here. 
So this is not uh, the maneuver node, the, the usual maneuver node that KSP uses. This is uh, internal. This is information of the maneuver node that TCA stores internally. Internal only. Yeah. So TCA would allow you to complete the maneuver precisely if it is installed. Uh, without it, the assisted acceleration uh, would require you to switch to the payload and then to continue maneuver with means that you have. But TCA can do it even if you haven't switched to the payload. So the payload flies away, uh, the accelerator stays focused and uh, still the payload completes its maneuver precisely. That's the big deal.